pray to the most high. Let's open up the wisdom of Solomon 14. Some of y'all in here about to get tight. Your mama boys gonna get upset, and some of the women about to get upset. But I'm not here to make friends with none of y'all. I'm here to give you out of scripture, and that's it. You either accept it or don't. <laughs> wisdom of Solomon 14, let's start at verse 16. Wisdom of Solomon 14, verse 16. Thus, in process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong was kept as a law, and graven images were worshipped by the commandments of kings. Now you might ask yourself, self, what does that scripture have to do with Mother's Day? It has everything to do with Mother's Day. Because Mother's Day, you know what I need you to find, Brazil, which I forgot. I need a picture on Isis, and I need a picture of Diana. I thought, read that again. Thus, in the process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong with Mother's Day is an ungodly custom. Mother's Day is an ungodly custom. Go ahead. Grown strong was kept as a law. That day has been kept as a law. This Sunday, according to the laws of the United States of America, we are ordered and commanded to reverence honor and uplift our mothers is kept strong grown strong and kept as a law go ahead and the graven images were worshipped by the commandments of king oh you think you got me now with that but what about that my brother <laughs> ain't no idols on that day yes there is yes there is we're going to show you the origin of mother's day in the holy bible okay jump down to verse 21 Verse 21. The son of wisdom of Solomon 14. And this was an occasion to deceive the world. Meaning idols. This whole chapter of wisdom of Solomon is going, in, going into idolatry. Read it again. And this was an occasion to deceive the world. For men serving either calamity or tyranny did ascribe unto stones and stocks the incommunicable name. The incommunicable name is the name of the Most High whom we call Yahweh, the world calls God, but they're referring to the Creator. And they gave him different names. Go ahead. Moreover, this was not enough for them, that they erred in the knowledge of God. But whereas they lived in the great war of ignorance, those so great plagues called they peace. Right, because all these wars that we go through, is based on ignorance. And they call it peace when one nation overcomes another nation. Right? But whilst they slew their children in sacrifices or used secret ceremonies or made revelings of strange life. You know what verse 23 is going into also? Like the Illuminati. They have those secret society where they give those sacrificial feasts, sacrifices. Read again. But whilst they slew their children in sacrifices. They killed children, like the Atlanta child murders. I don't know how, most of y'all probably too young to know about that. It was killing a lot of young black boys, okay? Go ahead. Or used secret ceremonies, or made revelings of strange rites. They kept neither lives nor marriages any longer undefiled. They kept lives nor marriages any longer undefiled. So the worshiping of idolatry has spread itself into all things, including marriages. It has corrupted marriages. Go ahead. They kept neither lives nor marriages any longer undefiled, but either one slew another traitorously or grieved him by adultery. Because adultery stems from that. A lot of you might be asking yourself, what does adultery have to do with idolatry? As we read down, adultery has a lot to do with idolatry. As we read down, you're going to find out that all sins stem from idolatry. You're going to find that out. You know? They get, uh, 25. Yep, 25. So that there reigned in all men, without exception, blood, manslaughter, theft, and dissimulation, corruption, unfaithfulness, tumults, perjury. Disquieting of good men, forgetfulness of good terms, defiling of souls, changing of kind. Changing of kind. Read that part again, I want to get that. Disquieting of good men, 
forgetfulness of good turns. The sliding of good men. Forgetfulness of good turns, meaning you do something kind for me in return, I would what? But it says forgetting. Okay, forgetfulness of good turns. Go ahead. Defiling of souls. Defiling of souls is going into what? Religions, false religions. Go ahead. Changing of kind. Changing of kind. Anybody got a little number in their Bible? Next to that changing of kind? Uh, it's a cut. Six. Right. Changing of sex. You a man, you want to be a woman. She a woman, she want to be a man. Changing of kind. And we're seeing that prevalent today. Mm -hmm. Right? Disorder in marriages. Disorder in marriages. Adultery. Mm -hmm. And shameless uncleanness. Come on. Now, well, shameless uncleanness. Hold this. Go to Baruch chapter 6, verse 11. Let me show you something. Baruch, we coming right back here. Don't lose it. Baruch 6, verse 10. Sometimes also the priests convey from their gods gold and silver and bestow it upon themselves. So on their idols, they had gold and silver. Then some of the priests would put it on themselves. But watch the next verse. Yea, they will give them up to the common harlots. They would give to the common harlots in the street and deck them as men with garments. And they would dress those women as men. There's some freak stuff going on up in there. You got a woman, you got her dressed like a man. A holly. What's going on with that thing? Read it again. Yea, they will give thereof to the common harlots and deck them as men with garments. I don't know how many, what's that comedy? With the Wayne's brother is scary. White chicks. White no, not white chicks. Scary movie. Scary movie. What's the Wayne's brother? Sean, Sean, Sean Wayne. Yes. There's one scene in that movie yes. where he tells his wife, put on his football helmet. Right. Now put on his shoulder pads. Yeah, anybody see this thing? Yeah, yeah. Put this on with it. Go on. You sure? Go on, girl, go on. Pull it on. Go on. I like that look. Ooh, yeah. I'm bad. Ah, yes. Yeah, put this on with it. Go on, girl, put it on. Yeah, put that shit on there. Come on. Just shove it on. Do it. Yeah. yeah anybody see this thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tackle me. Right, now tackle me. Tackle Dan in the back. She wanted him to play the role of the dude. And she's like, what? What? Tackle me. Tackle me. Then they're going to have sex. That's how you like to get down. But that's what this is talking about. Read verse 11 again. Yea, they will give them up to the common harlots and deck them as men with garments, being gods of silver and gods of gold and wood. So now, that's what was going on back there with some priests of Baal. Okay, let's go back to Wisdom of Solomon. Back to Wisdom of Solomon, and we were at verse 26 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 26. Disquieting of good men, of good men, forgetfulness of good terms, defiling of souls, changing of kind, disorder in marriages, adultery, and shameless uncleanness. Come on. For the worshiping of idols, not to be named, is the beginning, the cause, and the end of all evil. Read it again. For the worshiping of idols, not to be named, is the beginning, the cause. And the end of all evil. You see how I doubt when you worship idols, that's the root of all evil. Read it again. For the worshiping of idols, not to be named, is the beginning. Stop. It's telling you idolatry was the beginning of sin. Solomon is revealing to us the beginning of sin in Genesis was idolatry. I'm going to say it again, in case it went over some of y'all head. Mm -hmm. The beginning of sin from the time of Genesis was idolatry. Now, I'm going to prove that. Get me Genesis 3. I ain't going to go into it too deep. I'm just going to touch on it. Just going to touch on it. Yes, read verse 6. That's all I have. Genesis 3, verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. Good for food, meaning good for learning, good for understanding. And that it was pleasant to the eye. And it looked beautiful. Go ahead. And a tree to be desired 
to make one wise. This tree could make one wise. That ain't an apple tree can't make you wise. <laughs> she's talking, she's looking up at the stars, the sun, and the moon. Because astrology was the beginning of that stuff. Go ahead. And the tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof. She learned it. And did eat. And gave also unto her husband. She shared it with Adam. With her. And he didn't eat. And he didn't eat. Go back to wisdom of Solomon. 14 and 27 again. That's going to be for another lesson. I just gave y'all a little nugget there. You chew the cut on that. Wisdom of Solomon 14 and 27. For the worshipping of idols, not to be named, is the beginning. The beginning. The cause. The cause. And the end of all evil. Mm -hmm. Come on. For either they are mad when they be merry. That word mad there means crazy as hell. Crazy as a loon. Go ahead. Or prophesy lies. Mm -hmm. Or live unjustly. Or else lightly forswear themselves. Go ahead. For in so much as their trust is in idols which have no life. Though they swear falsely, yet they look not to be hurt. Right, they look not to be hurt because they believe that this idol is going to protect them. Go ahead. Albeit, for both causes shall they be justly punished. So for both reasons, God declares they shall be punished. Go ahead. Both because they thought not well of God, giving heed unto idols, and also unjustly swore in deceit. Despising holiness. So guess what that covers? That covers our mothers, our fathers, sisters, and brothers who worship Santeria, who worship the white image of Jesus, who worship uh, Brujaria, who are into voodoo, who's into la Dia de la Muerto, all of that paganism, evil stuff. The Most High says they are worthy to be punished. We can't change it. We cannot change the Bible to fit our parents or our loved ones. And I know some of you brothers struggle with that. I know that side of the room struggle with it. I get many emails from the women. What about my mama? Your mama gonna die if she don't repent. Sorry! What am I gonna say? Do I got to, I'm gonna change the most high scriptures around? Read it again. For, how be it, for both causes, shall they be justly punished. See, it says justly punished. Go ahead. Both because they thought not well of God. Right. They thought not well of God because when you give them the scriptures, no, 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 no. That's not God. No, no, no. Y'all talking about some evil stuff. God don't got woolly hair, but it says hair like wool. No, no, no. They despise it. Go ahead. Giving heed unto idols. They give heed unto idols. Rosary beads. What's that called that the Muslims got when they be, that bead, they, they got a bead just like yeah, the Catholics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's it called? Wicked beads. Wicked beads. <laughs> Wicked beads. Right. The Muslims even go to Mecca and worship Allah, the Kaaba stone. Kaaba means black, black stone, which was a meteorite. And then they throw, they make that pilgrimage and throw rocks at the, um, what is it called? Um, the, the Hajj. When they make that Hajj, they got Right. The Hajj is the actual trip. Read again. Albeit, for both causes shall they be justly punished, both because they thought not well of God, giving heed unto idols, and also unjustly swore in deceit, despising holiness. Right, they unjustly swore in deceit because they swore in the name of their idol. And they thought that idol was the one true God. Go ahead. For it is not the power of them by whom they swear, but it is the just vengeance of sinners that punisheth always the offense of the ungodly. Now see that from there. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah 44. So we started off with wisdom of Solomon because it laid the foundation that idolatry is the beginning, the cause and root of all evil. That idolatry is an ungodly custom kept strong grown strong and was kept as laws. And today they call those days in honor of idols, holidays. What does holidays mean, Liam? I don't know. I know, holidays. Holy days. Holy days, holy days. Like this Sunday, Mother's Day is called a holiday, a holy day. Let's see where it came from. Jeremiah 44. Verse 15. Verse 15. Jeremiah 44, verse 15. 
Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by, a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt. That dwelt where? In the land of Egypt. In the land of Egypt? In Patros. Answered Jeremiah, saying, As for the word, of, word that thou hast spoken unto us. This is what the Israelites that dwelt in Egypt said to Jeremiah. As for the words which thou hast spoken unto us, the holy laws of God. In the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. We will not hearken to what that Bible says. Go ahead. But, we'll, but we will certainly do whatsoever thing goes forth out of our own mouth. To burn incense unto the queen of heaven. To burn incense unto the queen of heaven. Now you got to know something about Egyptian history. In ancient Egypt, the queen of heaven was called what, I'm on? Isis. Isis. Can we show an image of Isis? You got, that's a, a statue of Isis. Okay, with the young son, I believe it was Horus. Horus was Seth. From there was extended the Trinity. You had Isis, Horus, and Seth. Those three made up the Holy Trinity. Okay, so, and, and that's not in the Holy Bible when it talks about that. When it talks about three, it's not talking about Isis, Horus, and Seth. Real quick, give me in the Catholic Church, Bezalel, the crucifix, IHS. That's uh, many of these in the Vatican. In many Catholic churches. See the IHS, it stands for Isis, Horus, Seth. That was the Trinity. And you got many of our people today in the Baptist church, Pentecostal church, that will teach you the Holy Trinity. And it all goes back to ancient Egypt. Okay? And you got the little Edomite angels all around. Read that again, I thought. Verse 17. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goes forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven. Now, in today's society, the Queen of Heaven, when Esau conquered, they took Isis identity and renamed her Mary. That's why you always see uh, Mary with the, the young child. It comes from ancient Egypt where Isis was always holding that, the, what was the name? Horus. Horus, right. In Babylon, it was Ceramicus and Tammuz. That's why you always see Mary holding a young baby. It goes back to Isis and Horus, which goes back to Ceramicus and Tammuz. You read about the child Tammuz in the book of Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. uh, the Israelite women were weeping for Tammuz, the infant child god. Okay, here's another one. You got Babylonian goddess Ceramicus and God incarnate son. See the one on the far left. Okay, then in the center you got the Indian goddess Oveka and infant Krishna. Many of y'all hear of Krishna with the eight arms and all that. It all goes back to the queen of heaven. The Indian goddess Isi and infant Iswara. Egyptian goddess Isis and son Horus. So that's the name. that's the name, Horus, thank you. Roman Catholic, Mary and God incarnate Jesus. So they took all those ancient things and melded it with try to try to mix it with the Bible. So if you don't know the Bible, you're going to be confused worshiping Mary and the baby Jesus. Okay, then on the far right, you got the goddess Diana of Ephesus. That's the queen of heaven. We're going to read about her in a few minutes. And all those children on the screen were conceived through immaculate conception. They were born December 25th. All of them were born December 25th. Right. right. So if you believe in immaculate conception, you worship all those gods on that screen. That's right. I'm glad you brought that out. Because in the, the Bible does not teach Immaculate Conception. You learn that from the Catholic Church, the mother of harlots. Mm -hmm. Then you want to try to bring it cunningly into Israel. No, you won't. No, you won't. And that's the word, cunningly. <laughs> right. They want to bring it cunningly, just like the elder said. They want, to, they want to try to make it seem like it's biblical. Right. And that's pure Satan. That's what it is. Exactly. Okay, back to Jeremiah 44 and fit us. What verse was that? Verse 17, 17 again. But we will, verse 17, Jeremiah 44. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goes forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her. As we have done, we and our fathers, our kings and our princes, in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. But then have we plenty of victuals, 
and we're well. And that, so, this is what I want y'all to look at. Look at verse 15 again. Yeah. Uh, overlook verse 15. All the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods. Stop. You had these husbands. They knew if their wives were into idolatry, they didn't say nothing to correct them. I'm going to say it again for some of you manly parents. Mm -hmm. Who know your wife is a daggone Rastafarian. She works, she got a picture of Haley Selassie on the wall. But the husband, brother at home, won't say nothing. Some of y'all know your wife got the rosary beads. You don't say nothing. That's what this is talking about. And when you read the chapter, the most I jacked our people up because of that. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. From the old school, we used to have elders. Their wives used to have the Christmas tree at their house. Mm -hmm. You understand? That Bible is a true book. Trust. Believe it. Come on, where was you at? Verse 17. But, but we will certainly do whatsoever thing goes forth out of our own mouth. What are they saying? They said, we're going to do whatever we want to do. That's what they say. These are women talking. And these are the women. We gonna do what we want to do. We don't care about that Bible. Go ahead. To burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto her, as we have done, we and our fathers, our kings, our princes, in the cities of Judah, and in the streets of Jerusalem. But then have we plenty of victuals. We had good, we had a lot of food then when we worship idols. Go ahead. And we're well, and saw no evil. We didn't see no evil. Right. But since we left off to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and to pour our drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things. We have lacked all things. Now, so what's going on here? They're saying that they was getting blessed when they worshiped the Queen of Heaven, mm -hmm. when they worshiped Isis, Mary, uh, Krishna. They got blessed. What's going on? Who can help? Something Satan said. Let's get that in Matthew 4. Here's the proof. This is why they got blessed. And a lot of women and men don't understand this is a spiritual fight. This is a spiritual walk. You want blessings? Watch. Here's your answer. 4 verse 4. And Jesus answered him saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. So Christ is telling Satan, man, it's not only regular food we're supposed to have, but we must live by every word of God. Everything the Bible says we must live by. Not just, because at this time, was the New Testament written? No. No, for those dumb Christians that say, only follow the New Testament. Christ at this time said, follow every word of God. That starts from Genesis. Go ahead. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Mm -hmm. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. That means the riches of them. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. Whoever I want to give it to, I give it. Go ahead. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Satan told Christ, if you worship me, I'll give you everything you want. Hmm. That opens up a door to something else. Amen. You want to know why you're these rappers are rich? These actors are filthy rich? These politicians are filthy rich? They bow down and worship Satan. Now that some of them knowingly have done it, like you see, uh, what's his name? You got Jay Z doing all, uh, Rihanna doing, and Beyonce doing that uh, Illuminati stuff with the hand. Okay. Some of them are knowingly doing it. Then you got some who don't know. Okay, so Satan told Christ, if you want to get rich, worship me. You want to get rich in this world, brothers, sisters, worship the devil and you will succeed. But you're going to pay a price at the end. The contract is short. Jeremiah 44, verse 18. But since we left off to burn incense to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things. And I've been consumed by the sword and by the famine. See what the women were saying? They said when we stop worshiping our idols, we call hell. So brothers and sisters, give me that in Ecclesiastes 2. Verse 19. Oh, okay, go ahead. Verse 19. And when we burned incense to the Queen of Heaven and poured out drink offerings unto her, did we make her cakes to worship her? and pour out drink offerings unto her without our men? Right. So the women were saying, these men that you talking to, they knew what we was doing. That's right. They was in 100% agreement. 
These weak, wicked men. Some of them might be some of y'all sitting up in here, some of y'all on the internet. You know daggone well your wife is the devil and you don't say nothing. Most I gonna punish every last one of you. Right, afraid to go home and start a fight. Right. Start the fight. Exactly. Push the buttons. Mm -hmm. For the most I'm gonna push the buttons on you. That's right. Okay, from there, go to Acts 19. So we read about the Queen of Heaven. Now we go into the New Testament to see what her name was called in Acts 19. And verse 34 and 35. Acts 19, verse 34. But when they knew that he was a Jew, when they realized that Paul was a Jew, all with one voice about the space of two hours. All those Israelites around Paul, Paul, about the space of how long? Two hours. Two hours, what they say? Right out. Great is Diana. They started to scream for two hours. Great is Diana. Great is Diana. Because they hated the scriptures. They loved Diana, the queen of heaven. The of the Ephesians. Read it again. But when they knew that he was a Jew, all with one voice about the space of two hours cried out, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. And when the town clerk had appeased the people, he said, ye men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how that the city of the Ephesians is a worshiper of the great goddess Diana, and of the image which fell down from Jupiter? So now, this is the goddess Diana, which was also called the queen of heaven. You see all the breasts that she got around her? The goddess of fertility. This is where Easter stems from. Ishtar. Take a good look at the breast. That's why they set up what America did. They took that, they set a bunny rabbit, and they said, oh, she lays eggs. And they have our children, what is it called? Have the Easter, Easter, egg. Easter egg hunt. It's referring to those breasts, the goddess of fertility. That was originally a Hamite god, an African god, Egyptian god, Babylonian goddess. All these gods have gone from nation to nation and changed their name and the com their complexion. From there, let's go to Jeremiah 31, 22. We're still dealing with Mother's Day. The Queen of Heaven is where that holiday comes from. Mother's Day, the Queen of Heaven, the worship of Isis, Diana. And the Lord prophesied that thing. Now, this right here goes to show you how wicked this society is. Because what's being extended to you now is being shown in the Bible that these so-called holidays that you're wrapped up in that your, that your foremothers, your grandparents, your moms, your aunts are wrapped up in is evil as hell. Mm -hmm. Completely evil. And it's wrapped up in these so-called churches. It's evil as hell. That's what we're seeing here. So this right here should make you think that whenever you see your family members involved in these things, you should see them as a terribly deceived people. Terribly deceived. And by you not celebrating those days, it's going to cause divisions in your household. The most I'm going to prove you, you might have been real close with your mother. Let you not celebrate that day. Let's see if that same love has extended towards you. You're going to find out. You emotional women, you're going to find that out too. No, no, no. So what? We want blessings from the Most High. I had to tell my mother, you will never get another gift from me on that day. What you talking about? I showed you the scriptures. I don't care. My, my daddy was mad. I don't care. Father's Day either. We don't touch that one later on. You ain't getting another card. Here come my kids. Daddy. Happy Father's Day. I said, uh, this is Nehemiah. I said, now what are you supposed to do with that? Tear it up. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can hear some people say, you traumatized him. <laughs> and that, that goes for Mother's Day too. They had to send letters to the school. I don't want them participating in that thing. There's no good going to come behind that. Jeremiah 31, verse 22. Here it comes. How long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. Let's read that again. How long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. 
A woman shall compass a man. Now you might ask yourself, what is that? What's so bad about a woman shall compass a man? In that verse, there's one word that lets you know if it's a negative or a positive. Bezalel. Backsliding. Backsliding. What does it mean, Bezalel? Backsliding. Right. It don't mean do the moonwalk. When you are backsliding, you are going away from what, Bezalel? From the most high. Right. From his commandments. Oh, backsliding daughter. The Lord will create a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. Women will be uplifted in society. Mother's Day. Okay. All of those things go back to that. Okay. But letting you know Israel will start to really follow that as a bulk. Okay. Watch this. Hold that. No, let that go. Go right back. I'm going to show you something. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon 14, 16. A woman shall compass a man. Go right back to the Apocrypha. Wisdom of Solomon 14, verse 16. Thus in the process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong was kept as a law. So now, we're, re we're reading that verse for today's lesson regarding Mother's Day. It's an ungodly custom grown strong. It has been kept as a law. Jeremiah 31, 22, the Most High prophesied, he will create a new thing in the earth, a woman shall compass a man. So all Israel would do something they never did before. Bow down and worship the woman. Now you got all men, every other song, what are they singing about? The woman or their mama. Mama, I always love you, mama. What the hell is this? What a song about the dead? Nobody sing about that. Yeah, daddy locked up. <laughs> Remember that? Y'all know you're older, but I always love my mama. <laughs> mama, mama. <laughs> yeah, Papa was a wrong song. That's, that's the intro. <laughs> Now watch this. Go from there. Go to Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. Colossians 2 and 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Vain deceit translates to lies. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Go ahead. After the tradition of men. All the traditions that the majority of our people Hold on to what man taught us these traditions? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The so-called white man. When he conquered us from 1492 on up till today, he's the one that taught us these ungodly customs grown strong in the earth. He's the man. Read the whole verse again. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men and after the rudiment and after the rudiments of the world. And not after Christ. And not after Christ. Because the so-called white man did not teach us anything about the true Christ, about the true holidays. He taught us vain deceit. He taught us traditions of men, lie after lie after lie. From there, let's go to Titus chapter 1 verse 14. Now listen good, this is not a hate campaign, because I know how simple people get. This is a truth campaign. Because if the white man taught us some truth, we tell you, he taught us the truth on that. No, he didn't! Ain't one holiday he taught us was true. Not near one. Every lie you can think of, he taught on us. Start with our nationality. Titus 1 and 14. Titus 1 verse 14. Not giving heed to Jewish fable. Jewish lies. That's what a fable is, a lie. Jewish means pertaining to the Jews. Lives that pertain to the Jews. Go ahead. And commandments. I'll give you a Jewish fable. Christmas is a Jewish fable. How does that pertain to the Jews? They say Christ was a Jew. He's a white man, number one, and he was born December 25th. That was Nimrod's birthday. That was Vishnu's birthday. That was Horus' birthday. That was not Christ's birthday. Let's go back to Titus 1. Date of birth, thank you. Titus 1, verse 14. Not giving heed to Jewish fables. Not giving heed to Jewish fables. I'm going to 
gonna tell you this. Mother's Day is a Jewish fable because they say it's ordained of who? God. God. Every church will honor Mother's Day this coming Sunday and say it's of, it's of the Bible, it's of God. That's a Jewish fable. Prove it, minister. Show me in the Bible. Show me in the Bible. Uh, uh, for God so loved the world. The hell is that? Come on. Do you realize how dangerous that is? You have you have, you have the pastor with a big mega church, got all the people sitting in there. He has a Bible in his hand, and he's going to talk about Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. And that garbage is not in the Bible. I'm calling it garbage. I hope you're offended when I say that. <laughs> that garbage. He's up there sitting up there talking about some Mother's Day. That garbage is not in the Bible. And all those people sitting up in there, death is all around them. Right. Because like I said before, the Most High just might get angry enough to say, you know what, I had enough. And kill and smash the church. Mm -hmm. He's done that before. Had a big wind to come and boom, the whole church, all the people dead. The Most High might do that thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Come on. Not giving heed to Jewish fables. And commandments of men. And commandments of men. Commandments of men. What men? Commandments of what men? Robert. The white man. That's right. Don't be scared to say it. The so-called white man. He's the one that taught us in slavery on up to today. He's been the teacher. He's been the scholar. And he's taught us lie after lie. Go ahead. That turned from the truth. What do those commandments of men do? That turned from the truth. All of those holidays that we keep, those customs, those traditions, turn us from God's truth. Every last one of them. Matthew 15 and 9. Listen good. That, this is what Christ said. Matthew 15 verse 9. But in vain they do worship me. In vain our people worship the Lord. In vain, meaning in lies. Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Right. We no longer teach the laws of God. We teach doctrines of men. Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Everything that's taught in every church, every synagogue, every temple, Islamic what do they call them? Mas. Mas, thank you. It's based upon commandments of men. Read it again. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. So now, Josiah brought out a point. Can you, Bezalel, can you show me the Isis and Horus again? Okay, stay right there. Uh, Josiah brought out a point that it's always the mother and child. Always the mother and child. Mother's Day is about the child honoring the mother, right? right? Then you got birthdays, okay? What do you always have? What do you get? You get the cakes, you get the candles, and a celebration, right? There's another celebration. <laughs> what other custom do our people keep that honors the mother? Baby showers. Baby showers. Baby showers. Thank you, brother. I'm going to make it plain for you. Right? As I'm going through the lesson, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm telling them, look, I'm looking at the pictures. These baby showers, what do they do? They sit the woman down. A big chair. Like, I'm going to tell you where it comes. It goes right back to the queen of heaven. It's honor of the woman, honor of the mother. Big wicked chair, generally. A cake, balloons everywhere, and people that hate God are generally around. I came up and I, what there was one cat not, not too long ago. I seen unbelievers up. I said, Dude, who's this? Who's that over there? <laughs> something, something ain't right with this thing here. Something ain't right. So now, you might ask yourself, self? Right, yeah, there you go. Thank you. Blow it up big. See that damn, damn chair? And the thing, the thing, you know, also, too, at these baby showers, the men are not invited. That's right. Oh, That's just only women. Right. right. Oh. They're almost oh, suggestive, yeah. immaculate birth. <laughs> Who is the father? That's a throne. Right. That's what it is a throne for the queen of heaven. And you, sisters, I know it was done ignorantly. 
But as we go further in this truth, the most High is going to purge a lot of the customs that many of us hold on to. He's going to purge it from us. We either going to obey and do what the Bible says or be moved out the way. Thank you. That's the, That's the bottom. That's the end of it. Okay? We are not bringing the stuff into the, the new kingdom that's about to come. That's right. We're that's not right. bringing the stuff. <laughs> okay? So, you might ask it, so what are we supposed to do? Give me Acts 4, Acts 4, you know what I want. <laughs> this is what our forefathers did. Acts 4, verse 33. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses, sold them and brought the prices of the, of the things that were sold. And laid them down at the apostles' feet and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. Distribution was given unto every man according as he had need. Distribution was given unto every man. Distribution was given unto every man according as he had need. You know why I'm stressing that? Because these customs, these ancient Egyptian customs, is always the woman, the woman. And God says, no, the man. So you got everybody here got a choice. You're either going to follow the vain deceit of the white man of Esau, or you're going to go by what this Bible says. Okay. I'm going to speak from my house, because I know what we're going to do. We're going to follow what this Bible says. Come hell or high water. You weak brothers, you got a decision to make. Because your wife might be grilling you right now. Brother, uh, brother they tell you, I'm really not chewing that. 100% and plus. So, we understand, brothers, y'all haven't, like, I thought wife is about to have twins. We know the things, we ask them what they need. There's a list of things they need. So, we're going to take care of it. But we are not, can we put up the throne again? <laughs> we are not having this. This queen of heaven stuff must go. And it's gone. It's ending today. That's it. That is it. So y'all can tell your unbelieving parents, we ain't having no baby shower. Keep your wicked behind home. Get mad now. Again. <laughs> Yeah, right? From there, let's go to 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. This is no different from what Lot's wife did. Mm -hmm. Good point. Look back yep. at the paganism that got put to death. 1 Corinthians 11. Verse 3. This is why Paul had to stress this thing to the Corinthians. Go ahead. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. Why did Paul have to, why did he have to even say that, Joel? Why did he have to say that? Hmm. Because the Israelites at Corinth got simple, forgot the order that the Most High set up. And what were they doing? Worshiping the woman. Just right. They were life. setting the woman up in seats of authority. So Paul said, read again. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. From there, let's go to Revelation 2. Not only did he have to repeat that with the Corinthians, Christ had to repeat it to the bishops of Thyatira. Hmm. Because Israel keeps getting simple going back to Egyptian customs. Let's set the woman up. She's in the, she can be the elder. She can rule. Oh, really? Not in here. It ain't that they just wanted to go back to those customs. What happened was the woman was in their ear. That's a good point. Very good. That's point. what was happening. And they listened to that thing. Mm -hmm. They hearkened unto that woman. Right. It was that woman that you gave me. Right. <laughs> That's what happened with Adam and Eve. Eve was in Adam's ear. And he got simple and gave in. So you brothers, you can be simple if you want. Because I know when you go home on your way home, there might be one of your wives whispering. Or she might not even whisper. What you gonna do, Nuka? I want a baby shower! 
<laughs> yeah, the key word is opinions. Those mm. opinions is what they put in the right. Through right, those opinions. Because the woman's not giving you the laws of God in your ear. She's giving you what she heard her mama say. She saw on TV. Edge of night, guiding light. She's going to tell you that. <laughs> What's going to cause you to, to lay the law down is the fear of the Lord. That's what's going to cause you to do If you know you have a gun at your head, you're going to get it straight. That's how you got to see it. If I listen to you, I'm going to die. That's how, that's, that's, that's how you keep things black and white. I don't like that gray area in between fifty right. garbage. It's, it's either yes or no. We either going to obey the laws of the Most High and live, or we're going to disobey Him and die. Right. That's it. Satan said, I'll, all this will I give you if you bow down and worship me. Can you put the throne back up there? All this will I give you if you bow down and worship me. So we ain't doing this. We ain't. Mm -mm. We ain't doing it. Now, from there, Revelation 2.18. Revelation 2, verse 18. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira. What does Thyatira mean? Who remembers? Raise your hand. Thyatira. A Barnabas. Thyatira. Isaac. Daughter. Right, it means daughter. It's Greek for daughter. Write it down. It might be on the test. Thyatira means daughter. Read it again. It's Greek. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira. Write, these things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like I'm brass. So we know this is the black man, Jesus the Christ. He's confirming it. He's confirming it. Right. Go right. ahead. I know thy works and charity and service. What does charity mean? Who knows what charity means? Sum it up for me. It's one law, charity. Only two brothers got a clue. Corey. Oh, love thy neighbor as you love God. Love thy neighbor as you love yourself. That's charity. Go ahead. Know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, your la their last works was more than their first works in this truth. But watch this. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. So these letters are written to the bishops of the congregation. That's the angels of the church. Go ahead. Notwithstanding, because angel means what? Messenger. messenger. The word angel means messenger. Go ahead. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. So you had a woman in the congregation named Jezebel. This is not the same Jezebel when you read about the book of Kings. This is a total different woman, but she had that name. And she was teaching the congregation the, the bishops, the men, allowed her to teach the congregation mm -hmm. to eat things offered to idols and to commit fornication. Go ahead. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication. Mm. And she repented not. So, Christ said, I gave her space to repent. I'm giving her time to get it right. Stop that. She's out of order. I'm giving her space to correct it. And said she repented not. Go ahead. Behold, I will cast her into a bed. Now the idea is Christ. Behold, I, Christ, will cast her into a bed. And them that commit adultery with her. Any brother or any sister that follows her. Go ahead. Into great tribulation. Let me read it again. Behold, I will cast her into a bed. And them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation. They're going to catch pure hell. Go ahead. Except they repent of their deeds. Except they repent of their deeds. Come on. And I will kill her children with death. What did Jesus Christ, the all loving Lord, say? And I will kill her children with death. Christ said, I will kill her children with death. Her children are her followers. I will kill her children with death. Not too long ago, there was a little coup in here. Woman, brother had his wife rise up. And several women then run behind her. Ah, women can teach. Women can lead the congregation. Hmm. Read it again. And I will kill her children with death. That's what Christ said. So you all in here got a choice. It's an easy choice. Read it again. 
and I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Come on. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan. And which have not known the depths of Can you give me Juanita Bino? Now these women with the Jezebel spirit, generally, they're not ugly women. They're generally attractive women. They have a seducing spirit and they teach like a man. Now show her husband. They're cool. They're cool. Yeah. Go back to her husband now. How many of y'all remember the news with them too? When it was they got in a fight. She said he spent too much too much time with the boys. So she went to a hotel. He went to make amends. As it turned out, he leaves. She's following behind him. Just running her mouth. He stopped, turned around, and the five fingers of death touched him. And it didn't end there. The news said he started to stomp her out. The Bella Boys had to jump on the dude. You gonna kill her? You gonna kill her? She would, she would not shut up. Place. He went to that dark place. Because he was walking away. He said, he said, I tried to make it where I can't deal with it. The woman just kept at it, at it, at it. Yes. And in that picture, he looked like a straight weak spirit. Yeah, he used to tell he got a weak spirit. Oh, she, she ran in fury out of that dude. When you hear them to teach, if y'all ever see TV, what's the black station? Black the word network the word network they're on there she teaches with the spirit of a man and he has a very weak yes brothers you know how i feel two spirits is flip-flop with them yes who had the hand up over there okay let's get back did you finish that verse verse 24 but unto you i say and unto the rest in Thyatira. Oh, let me show you another one. Get this is a white woman. Blonde hair. Paula White. Show Paula White. Paula White. Right, the devil. Now you brothers in here that used to date white women. I'm glad you're a painter because you've been in, you'd have been running behind this one right here. <laughs> this woman is another one. She's very cunning when she teaches, very slick and charismatic. Will draw you in. It's the beauty, it's the, the looks. If you like that type of look there, will draw you in. <laughs> she got the, the manicure and nails, always in uh, Versace, all top notch coat. She will never look like a bum. I'm surprised, though. <laughs> she make the devil look good. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so now that, that was that. Somebody's looking at this and say, you know what? This woman could be saved. <laughs> Somebody's thinking this that there's no way in the world that this is going to happen. She might be saved. She ain't be I'm gonna, I'm gonna just destroy the dreams. There's gonna be a chain clamped around her neck. Yeah. Okay. I said it's going to be a chain clamped around her neck, around her wrist and her ankles, and she's going in the same. So I know that that image breaker hurts. Ain't going to be no makeup no more. That moose in the head, that ain't going to be there no more. You gonna, ain't going to be no Gillette razor ever again. You gonna see it <laughs> Exactly. But unto you I say, um, Revelation 2 verse 24, but unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. So the Lord said, those of you in Thyatira who have not learned the depths, you see that word depths? Is that what it said? Depths. Depths. You know what that implies? There's different levels. There's different levels of wickedness in that thing. There's levels of devils. <laughs> so when you get to with those women with the hunger, 
That's another level right there. What the hell is this? How many of y'all saw the video with Juanita Biden when she had the men lift her up and put her in the Ark of the Covenant and they marched her? Anybody saw that thing? Damn. They had her as the high priest. The blue robe of authority. Yes. This is called a mitre. And a mitre is the helmet of salvation. So you got to be saved to be an intercessor. Did I just help you, sister hypocrite? Sister shacking up with a boy? Did I just help you, Miss Lesbian? Miss Fornicator? You got to be saved. See, somebody ought to just start praising God just off GP. The helmet of salvation. Who is on YouTube? I don't know what it's called, though. You gotta be kidding. I am dead. I am serious. I am serious. So they did what they did with this guy. What's his name? Same thing. Eddie Long. Same thing. Same thing. Now, understand this. There's a difference between what we're reading here, because what is the, the sister's conversation supposed to be? What is their conversation? Chase. Chase. Huh? Chase. What does that mean? I want easy words. Are they supposed to be talking about the edge of night, guiding light? What is, what's the conversation? Yep. Yes. How to raise the children, how to treat their husband. According to what? The scriptures. Right. Their conversation is supposed to be the scriptures. Right. I'm going to say it again. Their conversation is supposed to be the scriptures. Or you'll have what happened one Passover where there's a group of women talking about whose husband can lay the pipe down the hardest. That is not to be their conversation. That is not to be their conversation. Their conversation is supposed to be dealing with family in accordance to the scriptures. Not, sister, sister, get your Bible. Let's break down Daniel 7. Ha ha ha! Uh-uh. Deal with family. Deal with loving your husband. Loving the children. Give me that Titus 2 and um Titus. Y'all are laughing. Y'all laughing when he said about the certain uh topics that came up during the Passover. But what that shows you is how far our people are away from the Lord. That shows you how far far removed our people are away from the most high. That's why that's why I spoke about that mercy before. He is a merciful God too that will allow you to take another day of breath on this earth because uh, I'm going to leave it alone. Titus 2, 3, and 4. Now, actually, Titus 2, verse 3 to 5. Titus 2, verse 3. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers. A false accuser is a gossiper. You spread in discord and deceit amongst the congregation. Go ahead. <laughs> the aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine. Not a drunk. Go ahead. Teachers of good things. See, it's saying teachers of good things, and he's going to break it down for us. That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. Now, all of that is according to the Bible. Their conversation is supposed to be the Bible. How to love your husband, how to love your children, keep the family together. Leave all the other stuff to break down to the brothers. I hope all your sisters understand that. Go ahead. To be discreet, uh -huh. chaste, keepers at home. Keepers at home, go ahead. Good, obedient to their own husbands. That the word of God be not blasphemed. So that's to be their conduct. Okay, I hope everybody understands that. Now, Ezekiel 13. We're still dealing with mothers there, I don't forget. Here's another thing that comes as a result of mothers there. Ezekiel 13, verse 17. Likewise, thou son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people. Set thy face, you son of man. 
set your face against the daughters of thy people. So the Lord is commanding the prophets, teach against those women. Teach against the women of your people. Read it again. Likewise, thou son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their own heart, and prophesy thou against them. So these women that are set themselves up as teachers, the Lord said, set your face against them. These women prophesy lies out of their own heart. And everything that these women preach, like we just saw an example of, is what the white man taught them. And then they want to push it on to the people. If you just walk down Eastern Park where you see all these Jehovah Witnesses, a lot of them be women, older women, and they're not, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. God loves you. God bless you. And they give you these little tracks. Right? And say, thus said the Lord God, woe to the women that so pillows to all armholes. The word pillows there, that's those shirts with the big sleeves. That pillow in the wind. Okay, go ahead. Woe to the women that sew pillows to all armholes and make kerchiefs upon the head. Because in many congregations, the women have these little handkerchiefs on their head. I know like in a lot of Baptist churches, they have these little handkerchiefs, white handkerchiefs, yeah. held on with paper, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Bobby, pins. Bobby pins. Thank yeah. you. Read it again. And say, uh, woe to the women that sew pillows to all armholes and make kerchiefs upon the head of every stature to hunt souls. To do what? To hunt souls. To hunt souls. That's their purpose. To hunt souls. Go ahead. Will ye hunt the souls of my people? And will ye save the souls alive that come unto you? So the Lord is asking them a question. Will you hunt the souls of my people? Will you save the souls alive that come unto you? Go ahead. And will ye pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread? You see that? So these women teachers in Christianity, that's what it's talking about. Because it ain't the Muslim women doing it, although we got to speak against them. It's primarily these Christian women that's out there on the highways and byways teaching the people. Read it again. And will ye pollute me among my people? How do they pollute the Lord? Among Israel, how do they pollute them? That's a good question. That's right. They teach you. Number one, they teach you. What do they teach you? They teach you that all nations can be saved. All nations can be saved. God loves all races, and God is white. You don't have to keep the diet. You don't got to keep no commandments. That's what they're doing. And the orders change. Right. Thou art loose. Right. Woman, thou art loose. Right. Read that again. And will you pollute me among my people? For handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread to slay the souls that should not die. To slay the souls that should not die. So they're killing. How are they slaying the souls that should not die? Give him an example. To slay the souls that should not die. What are these women doing? I'm off. Uh, some, some of the doctrines going around is not keeping the laws of the Most High God. Um, some of the doctrines in the churches and Christianity, uh, the dress code. There is no such thing as a dress code. You come as you are. Uh, whatever the lifestyle, the people is coming in. Right. Um, Slaying the that. souls, thank you. Slaying the souls that should not die. Are those spirits, those souls that come to them for answers? Like, for example, why did we go into slave? These are minds that have questions. Why do we worship a white Jesus? These are those young souls that have sincere questions, and these women are slaying them. Don't worry about that. That has nothing to do with the Bible. Forget about it. Sit down. Shut up. Okay, read that part again. Will ye pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread to slay the souls? That should not die? So those souls that should not die are those souls that are reading the Bible and asking sincere questions. I don't, Ma, I, uh, Ma, I don't see Christmas. Where is that at? Can you show me? Well, guess what? We are going to celebrate. So these minds that are looking through the Bible and have a whole lot of questions, these women are set up to kill those spirits. <laughs> kill them. Go ahead. And to save the souls alive that should not live, and to save the souls alive that should not live. Though that's those rebellious spirits that don't want to do the laws. And those women are saying, 
God bless you. Mm -hmm. Come, come as you are. Okay? That's what's going on in these Christian churches. The women that want to dominate and rule, those women are drawing all those spirits. And those are the ones that's going to die. Right. And, and right, those are the ones that's going to die. And back to that first part, like if the man says, why are the women leading the church? The women are slaying them, killing them. Don't you know we are more spiritual than men? That's why we fill the churches. Where's the black man's image in, in the Bible? Don't worry about that. Worship the white image. That's what they're doing. They're killing the souls that should not die. And the bottom part said what? And it says, save the souls alive that should not live. And saving the souls alive that should not live. That's those rebellious ones. Go ahead. By your lying to my people that hear your lies. Read that bottom part again. By what? By your lying to my people that hear your lies. So God is telling us what these women are doing. <laughs> By your lying to my people with your lies. Go ahead. Wherefore thus said the Lord God. Behold, I am against your pillows, wherewith ye, wherewith ye there hunt the souls to make them fly. Right, they make them fly into lies and wickedness. And I will tear them from your arms. God has prophesied, I'm going to tear those souls from your arms. How is he going to do that, Isaac? He's going to tear the souls from your arms by replacing them. I like that question. That's right. Like that. Uh, teaching. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Ed is, is on it. By the prophets, the son of man out teaching, there's going to be women and men that hear the truth, regardless if they're in the depths of Satan under these women, and going to repent. So you know what? I see the order. I can read it for myself. I see it. I'm coming into this truth. Read it again. Wherefore thus said the Lord God, Behold, I am against your pillows, wherewith ye, wherewith ye there hunt the souls to make them fly. And I will tear them from your arms, and will let the souls go, even the souls that ye hunt to make them fly. Right. Your kerchiefs also will I tear. And deliver, deliver now where is the kerchief at? <laughs> On their head. So God said he's going to tear that kerchief. You know what it means? He's going to split that head wide open. That's the same thing Christ said, I'm going to kill her and her children with her. Go ahead. Your kerchiefs also will I tear, and deliver my people out of your hand. And they sh shall be no more in your hand to be hunted. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Come on. Because with lies, ye have made the heart of the righteous sad. With your lies, you have made the heart of the righteous sad. What about slavery? Forget slavery. Don't even mention it. Worship white man, Jesus. For God so loved the world. <laughs> now the young soul is like, but that, that don't seem right. We caught so much hell. We in all this poverty. We got AIDS. We suffer from AIDS, gonorrhea, drug addiction, alcoholism, and God so loved the world. Is there no justice? And the woman goes, no! Worship the white man and be saved. I got a scripture. Uh, the book of Numbers. Chapter 27, verse 16. Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. Oh, praise to the Most High. Read that again. Because of lies, ye have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made, whom I have not made sad. Because the Lord didn't make us, He gave us His word, His truth. Go ahead. And strengthened the hands of the wicked. And these women strengthened the hand of the wicked. Meaning amongst our people, the wicked of our people, they strengthen their hands. Because guess what? I'm going to give you an example. All these drug dealers, these thug Israelite boys out here that's robbing and raping, guess what their mothers are? Sorry, the church. Christians. Christian deaconesses, Christian pastors, reverends. Read it again. Because of lies, he has made the heart of the righteous sad whom I have not made sad, and strengthen the hands of the wicked, that he should not return from his wicked way. That, he, that the wicked should not return from his wicked way. That's the proof that that's Israel. Go ahead. By promising him life. You promised that drug dealer's son life. That's what these women are doing. You promised the woman that's in the midst of abortion, after abortion, life. That's what these women ministers are doing. 
Go ahead. Therefore ye shall see no more vanity, nor divine divination. Because these women are dealing with witchcraft. That's why it's using the term divine divination. I sat there in the spirit with ha ba 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 I got that I got a word of knowledge for you. I got a word of knowledge, the Lord, the Holy Spirit is on me. Right, suit say. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, well, no. Most I showing you why they got the crowd. Because it's a spirit in them who seduce them to get the crowd. That's why Most I telling you why these wicked women make pastor, how these pastors gather the people by witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Read verse 23. Therefore ye shall see no more vanity. No more lies. Nor divine divination. Witchcraft. For I will deliver my people out of your hand. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. And you shall know that I am the Lord. Second Ezra 10, 33. Second Ezra 10, verse 33. And he said unto me, and he said unto me, Stand up manfully, and I will advise thee. See what the Lord said to Ezra? That's the message to us. Stand up manfully, and I will advise you. The Lord don't deal with no weak brothers. He don't deal with you. Why do y'all talk so rough? You shouldn't be. Shut up! And sit down! You weak yellow makes me sad. That's why yellow makes me sad, I think. You what makes me sad. You do! Maybe we should chug on over to Mamby Pamby Land where maybe we can find some self confidence for you, you jack wagon! <laughs> <laughs> 15 minutes could save you 15 percent or more. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh, how you break the man in the Exactly. All crying all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that commercial. Let me say this here real quick. Um, we've had classes like this before and we have heard some comments where the women would go home later get with their husbands and say this was woman bashing right okay we're reading the, we, and in all these classes can i get a witness <laughs> in all these classes we're reading the bible right why in the hell would you when you get home you're gonna hear the woman that sat in class with you come to you and tell you this is woman bashing. Right, exactly. And why would she say that to you? You know what you heard. You know what books were read. Why she, listen, listen, if that's the way you feel, you keep that crap to yourself. Don't tell it to me. I don't want to hear it. Because the whole point in telling it to you is for you to make a choice between her mouth or the Bible. That's right. That's right. And when you do that, you're asking me to be put to death. Mm-hmm. You got to see these things. Y'all understand that? Yes. Do y'all understand? Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes. It's all, you got to be you got to be bold as hell to come to me and tell me that the Bible is wrong. Cause that's what you're saying. Right. Exactly. From there, let's go to Luke. Luke chapter 11, verse 27. Luke 11, verse 27 and 28. Because with Christ, there was a woman that rose up and tried to exalt Mary. Let's see what Christ said about that day. Luke 11, verse 27. Then it came to pass, as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee, and the paps which thou hast sucked. Blessed be your mama! Your mother's blessed! Read. But he said, Yea, rather, yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. You hear what Christ said? So he cut it down right there. Boom! Read that again. <laughs> but he said, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Rather mean disregard all that God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what rather mean. Rather means leave all that mess over there and deal with this. I mean, whatever. Exactly. Right. The hell with that. Yeah. Do exactly. this. That's what he's saying. So that's what the Son of God said. That's what Messiah said. So everybody in here got a choice. You can follow that woman doctrine if you want. Yellow makes me sad. <laughs> From there, Romans 1 and 20. So now, what was the beginning? What caused Mother's Day? Who remembers? 
What caused Mother's Day? Leave out. Idolatry. Idolatry. I, see, I, was, I was waiting to see if you was going to get it. Idolatry. They worship Isis, Ceramicus, and things of that nature. Romans 1 and 20. Now we go into the New Testament. Watch another thing that idolatry causes. Mm -hmm. Come on. Verse what? 25? 20. Well, Romans 1 verse 20. Okay. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. The invisible things of him from the, from the creation of the world. You know why it's invisible? Because we did not, in, in our lives, have not seen the Lord and Christ and the angels create these things. So that's why we didn't see it done. Read it again. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. It's clearly seen, come on. Being understood by the things that are made. We understood that Genesis is correct based upon the sun, the moon, the stars, based upon the rivers and the oceans, mankind, uh, animals, birds, sea creatures. Just like Genesis chapter 1 explains. Yes, Genesis chapter 1 explains. Thank you, go ahead. Even his eternal power and Godhead, mm -hmm. so that they are without excuse. Read that part again. Mm. Even his eternal no. so that so that they are without excuse. That goes for you, your mama, and your father, sisters, and brothers that say in rebellion. How you know that Bible is true? The Bible says when you look at all the things created, they're without excuse. There's no excuse. You can come. To, I didn't believe in you, Lord. Because, and they come with some BS, they're going to get death. The Bible says they are without excuse. Go ahead. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Mm -hmm. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Mankind professed themselves to be wise, they became fools.